Okay. All righty, we are live. Welcome, 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 everybody. Good evening, good afternoon, wherever in the world you may be. I'm Lesia 75, the Black Unicorn, as y'all already know. And I'm being joined tonight by the beautiful, the one and only Jay Essence, all the way from. It's me. Oh, it's me. It's me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, girl, how are you? I am fine. I am lovely. I could be singing Lovely Day right now. Like, I'm on that level. The Jill Scott Lovely Day remix, whatever. I am doing so good. I love it. I love it. Okay, you know, sometimes I get people that are on my channel uh, asking about Rwanda. Sometimes I get emails asking about Rwanda. I don't live yeah. in Rwanda. I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> but you do. So I'm do. happy to here. Yes, yes. And I'm hoping that you can share um, with us a little bit about Rwanda, starting with okay. why did you decide to go? What made you move to Rwanda? Um, so there's a little bit of like preparation and planning and a whole bunch of God snatching my life and saying, I told you to do something and I ain't know how to really listen to it. <laughs> so, um, like, and my story is kind of complex in that regard. I first, I kind of break it up into two parts. One, I knew I was leaving America. Didn't necessarily know where I was going to end up, but I knew it was time to go. So like when people always ask, and I get questions like that too, like how did you prepare for Rwanda? My first phase was just preparing to leave America. And I actually went to Dubai. And so um, I was, you know, shut everything down. I just needed a space to breathe and to think and just to get away from things. And I do believe that even in that concept, I was really looking to go to Ghana. Um, for a long-term goal, I was really saying, where do I want to retire? Where do I want to have the rest of my life? Because the reality for me was I could not see my retirement life in America. Like I was working so hard and trying to be so right and do so well in the job. And I was getting the accolades, getting the resume, doing all of those things. And I just was like, okay, so at the end of 20 years, 30 years or whatever, um, just with the way the economy was popping off, just with this, like, I just couldn't see a peaceful end of a job well done. So I was like, I'm going to make my peaceful end. I'm going to make, girl, that sounds like, like death. Not like that. Not that kind of peaceful end. Um, I just caught that one. Like, whoo, hold up. Bring, bring, bring some of the words back. Um, but it was more so like, how can I create that? So I was looking at Ghana. Um, I have a lot of friends in Ghana. Ghana's like the go-to space for places to be and all that other stuff. And so I was starting to say I'm paying down debt and trying to build up this income. And I knew when I moved overseas, I was really going to stack. And like I said, my eyes, my heart, everything was Ghana, 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 Ghana. And um, it wasn't until I moved to Dubai. And the thing I will let people know is when you change your like perception or just change your placement, you can hear so many different things. And because I was in America, you hear about Ghana all the time because Ghana is West Africa. And it's the one that's closest to the U.S. is what you constantly hear. Once I moved to Dubai, Dubai is actually closer to East Africa. And that's when I started hearing um, there's this Rwanda place, there's this, it's so beautiful, and all of these things. And it became because I don't like to get into too much technicals, but for what I was looking for and the things that I needed, Rwanda was showing that they were more progressive in offering that um, than Ghana was at the time. And then one of the big critiques that I had as being a single woman, that in Ghana, I felt like I was going to have to stop my job in order to plant my life. You have to be there to watch construction. You have to be there to kind of get those things. So for me, it was like a more of a closed chapter where I felt like Rwanda, I was able to kind of set up and be like, okay, well, maybe I'm going to purchase a house. Okay, then I can go back and work for a couple of years and then I can do this. And I felt like I could move small. But then that's when God jumped in and all of a sudden a job opening opened up in Rwanda and I qualified and I actually got hired. And that's how I moved to Rwanda permanently. Okay. Okay. Now I have two questions. 
<laughs> go for it. Let's go. I look so bright. I look ashy bright. Like, okay, all right, let's do this. No, it's good. You you, you do look a little like high yellow though. I do. It's, it's literally like it don't look like I'm in Africa. I look like I'm coming straight from Antarctica right now. Like, okay. There we go. Um, like, I got it. My first question to you is like, what were some of the things that you were looking for in Ghana that you didn't feel it provided here? Because um, you're probably right, but I just want to hear you saying it as a- oh, as You're gonna get me in trouble. Let, let nope. all of this stuff pop off. Let everybody start saying how I'm a hater and everything. Um, Girl, woo, have you all right. Now. Let's do this. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. So when I was doing my research for Ghana, one of my biggest critiques, and this is where I can get in trouble and people say it's not true, but I felt it was, is that I knew that I wanted to do business. I knew I wanted to buy land. I knew I wanted to do these things. And I always kind of heard of like, I don't, you know, like, you know, you know, corruption or like, the, you know, you have to know who you're talking to. You have to know this. You have to know that. The women who I saw really doing great things and progressing were women who all had Guyan partners or a Guyan background. And for me coming in with neither one of those, I was really concerned about how am I going to navigate this space and be fair and not have those advantages. And so that was one thing that always kind of stuck out to me. Um, another one was, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, and this is gonna get me in trouble, y'all. I know that everybody says like Ghana is like, oh, they're always you know, telling African-Americans to come here. It's the year of return. It's all of this other stuff. And from what I saw is that they loved our tourism but in the year of return, they weren't making laws or trying to help businesses succeed or, you know, go through those little things or everything else like that. And a lot of people who were in Ghana were like, well, you just get used to it once you get here. And so for me trying to be an outsider coming in, I just didn't feel like it was as welcoming as people said. It's like kind of people kind of put their foot down and say, I'm here and this is how we're going to move and do things. Um, so what happened was for me doing the research, I felt like I had to do a lot more learning. And I was never saying no. It was just like there was just a lot more learning I had to do on the ground. The biggest catalyst for me was that um, once the man who was in office who changed, mm, um, my mother was getting frustrated and she called me. She was like, yo, you're going to Ghana. I'm coming with you. And that's when I was like, oh, I don't think we can do that. And the reason why is it's one thing for me to have to go through stress and strife. It's one thing for me to have to be on the ground and figure out how to make things happen. My mom's 74, and she ain't a 74 like she old and she tired. She's a 74 like, don't start no more, be none. And I was like, I can't go to Ghana and set Ghana on fire because somebody tried to do my mama wrong, and she hot in the streets. Like It just was like, I need a place that already has systems, especially with someone who's older and trying to learn things. And it was her first time on the continent, and it was just like, okay. And what happened is Rwanda was answering all those questions. They have a way to get your business license for free. It's a very cut, you know, very step one, step two, step three, very helpful community. Um, basically, um, they really worked hard to really kind of get rid of corruption in every way possible. And so, especially now too with elders, um, they have what's called an assured income class K visa, which means that if you're retired you, and you can prove that you get retirement money, you automatically get your visa. And so what was happening is like everything that I was looking for to, to figure things out, it was just a better leeway for Rwanda versus Ghana. Ghana did not have those systems in place. And I just did not feel as if they were as welcoming as they stated they were. So I am going to co-sign on everything you just said. Everything you said is 100% facts. I've been here for two years now. And I will tell you that doing business in Ghana is extraordinarily complicated. Um, the corruption and bribery is so deeply embedded in every single industry and nepotism is a way of life. And I've never actually seen anything quite like it. And um, if you do not have someone that can guide you and lead you and introduce you and mm -hmm. help, as, as a woman, especially in tech, speak for you initially just to get your foot in the door because it's so patriarchal here, um, forget about it. Personally, I wouldn't tell any woman in tech to come to Ghana. Absolutely not. Because this, oh, wow. this there is a... Uh, 
prevalent uh, practice here of, of sexy um, uh, a male boss or potential colleague or someone who can give you a contract in order to get it. This is not the 1960s. We are not in Mad Men mania and you know, feminism is real and we are free. <laughs> um, but in Ghana, it's like you step back in time. So you are 100% right uh, on all counts. Everything you're saying is right. Uh, it is hard to move around and navigate sometimes without having a Ghanaian or period, without having a Ghanaian who can speak. You know, they don't know that you're not Ghanaian if you don't say anything. But if you start mm. speaking, you hear that American accent, all Damn. you see in the is money, dollars. Mm -hmm. Literally, mm -hmm. literally, you see it in their eyes. And the government has done nothing but put obstacles in the way to make it harder and harder for um, the diaspora. In my personal opinion, this is not anybody's facts, yep. people. This is not legal advice. This is not me telling you what laws are in place. This is for entertainment purposes only. For entertainment. Those. Yeah, entertainment. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> right. The whole thing of it is, is that uh, processes are being put in place or have been put in place to make it more and more difficult to be anything but a tourist here. And mm -hmm. for those of us who are here who are managing to do something, it comes at a heavy price and it's a long, long struggle, uh, to be honest. It, it's a long time to get things done where if you were other places, things could get done much faster, you know, way faster. So I co-sign to everything you said, you are 100% right. Uh, the fact that Rwanda has the ability to allow you to register your business for free, Ghana has yes. absolutely nothing for free. Without, <laughs> wait, let me get that one too correct. Let me say this correctly, without having to prove collateral. Like yeah. they yeah. want yeah. businesses here. They want businesses, they want investors, they want to really impact and improve the economy so they turned around and made it um like i said the process is for registering a business very one two three four five you're in yeah you know the thing about ghana though is so strange to me is that these bizarre things that they say about you have to have a hundred thousand dollars five hundred thousand dollars a million dollars to register a business these are all untruths because <laughs> businesses are registered Yep. Businesses are, are, are moving forward. You know, it's just all about who you know, though. And that's that's what makes it unfair, um, quite honestly, because you can't just come in and just do something without knowing the right people in Ghana, right? So, um, yeah, you're right. They, they definitely are looking for nothing but tourist dollars, um, honestly. I live here, so I can say this. So those of you who want to hate yeah. on me, I I'll come from the outside, I can say it. <laughs> Go ahead. I mean, and it's hard because it's like you want to sit there and really talk in truths because we do come in with so many preconceived notions and thoughts. But sometimes if you turn around and offer a critique, people take that as the whole scope. And it's not. It's a critique. Um, yeah. You know, like, I, I don't know. It's like I, I love the color purple. You know, I love the whole movie. But if I critique this one part. Like this one part got my nerves. It doesn't mean that I'm discrediting the whole thing. And that's what it is at this point in time is that when we're talking, we're because if the truth is if people who really want to change are listening, then they're going to take note and make those changes because you do really want to have solid economy. Tourism is not a solid economy. You could turn around and have people authentically moving to places, building jobs, building income, building opportunities, strengthening, offering thought power and so much more if those processes were in place. Right, exactly. Okay, so real quick, let me give a shout out to everybody watching. Thank you guys all for joining this live, for coming up in the comments, for supporting Miss J Essence Journey on YouTube. If you don't know who she is, go follow her channel. At the end of this um, live, I'm going to put her YouTube channel in the description, but she's going to talk more about who she is, what she does, her business, everything, so you guys can reach out to her. But on YouTube, she is J Essence Journey. Uh, thanks, guys, for, watch, for watching in the bush. Um, there's a few of y'all watch, watching in the back, you in the back row in the bush. Uh, go ahead and like the video since y'all up your eye, <laughs> right? <laughs> since y'all already up in here. Um, mm -hmm. I appreciate all of you uh, for joining. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back to it. Um, all right. Critiques are necessary 
So many people do not like hearing the truth, especially here in Ghana, flat out. This is just pure truth. They do not want to hear the truth. They want fluff and plantain and rainbows. Well, they not getting none of that on my channel. So, you know, it is can, what it is. Can I stop for a second? Did you say plantain and rainbows? Are you after my heart? Like <laughs> Rainbows, girl. Yes, that's what they want. Plantains and rainbows. Okay, yes. <laughs> and it's like, there's a piece of like, it's okay to critique, dude. That's how we get better. That's how yeah. we become better and different things like that. But like to carry that fluff. And I know I feel bad because all the time people are like, oh, you just talk so much about Rwanda. Da, da. And I'm like, Rwanda's my answer. I love Rwanda. I right. am so ecstatic and everything. But it's, it's for each person, it's their own journey. Like right. there is a place that is calling your name and it might not be Ghana. For me, Ghana has turned around and done so many things for so many people. I will be partying in Ghana during New Year's and I'll be in Ghana in streets, but that's not where my home is. And that's not where my heart is going to be um, the happiest. I found some place that makes me feel 100 percent authentic and has given me the, the right to soar. And I told right. people, like, I have discovered a whole new definition of who I am. And Rwanda has given me that opportunity. So Right. And so I think that that is important for people to hear from you because that's how I feel about Ghana. Right. Um, yeah. Even with all the nonsense yeah. and, and, and craziness that happens, I still feel a sense of peace here. And I feel that anything is possible here that I can achieve a lot being here. Um, mm -hmm. It's just all about learning the game for me. But I'm glad to hear you say that because people need to understand that we are walking our own journey as we, we are deciding to come back to Africa. We're deciding to make Africa our home and we're all going to different countries. Yes, Ghana yes. is in the limelight because a year of return and so many of the YouTubers are in Ghana. You know, yes. that, that acts a lot of attention too. But um, it's nice to see people following other channels like your own and people in other African countries so they can get a perspective or at least a balance of what's happening mm -hmm. side of just Ghana. <laughs> like cause Africa is a whole continent, you know? Um, so, like an entire continent. Like, oh my gosh, like. Yeah. Like, yeah. like all of it. Like yeah. you can't do Africa in a day. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never, right? It's not six flags, just saying. Uh, no. <laughs> Um, so you said you got a job in Rwanda. How did you wind up securing a job in Africa? Because that's uh, something I haven't. It's really hard, heard. dude. It's hard. So that's why I said, like, and um, I will say, like, my journey. I do feel like my journey is a God journey at this point. Um, I don't know how. Um, and like the one thing that people tell you is like, keep your moves quiet. Don't let everybody know your moves. You know, like if you're planning something, shh, be quiet. Um, I was about to say break it down. <laughs> um, nobody wants to hear the sound. This is a private affair. Um, <laughs> but um, what happened is, is that when I had like 12 people who watched my YouTube, 12 people, I mm -hmm. had my friend record because at that point in time, I remember distinctly that I was debating between Ghana and um, Rhonda. And so I had made the decision that I was going to moved to Ghana for a long time. Like I had made this big announcement. I'm going to be bi, bi coastal. Like, and I was going to like live in both countries. And so on this YouTube channel, like on this little piece, nobody's watching. I was going to say that I was going to start looking to relocate to Rwanda in the next two to three years. I slipped up and said within the next year, but it's 12 people on my channel. So I was like, nobody's watching whatever else like that. Like I was just really documenting because um, I get tired of people asking me questions. So I just send them a link. And lo and behold, the moment that I stated that and published that, like in three weeks, I had moved in with, to Rwanda. Like somebody just happened because I opened my mouth, knew about a job position. I applied for it. It was a perfect fit and it managed. And so that's why I said, for me, it's a God journey because finding a job on the continent is difficult. It is so difficult. And if we're going to go ahead and go there, let's clutch all the pearls. Let's just go ahead and clutch all of them. Number clutch one, clutch, <laughs> <laughs> number one, getting a pay scale salary that you want that's underneath the USD currency because we don't know how to live any other place is one of the first things that's hard. A lot of people say, oh, OK, well, I can do a job. Hence, um, OK, well, I'm going to be a nurse there. Do you know nurses here get paid? 
you know, at mm -hmm. one level where mm -hmm. just because you carry a U.S. passport, you might get paid for something at a different level. So you need mm -hmm. to find a job that is an expat job because you're not going to be ready for that other lifestyle, period, point blank. That's number one. Number two is um, they not looking for us. Um, oh, I'm so glad you said that. I'm so glad you said that because that is the truth, 100 Oh, thank you for saying that. Keep going, and girl. Keep if going. people, if people, especially in my field, if I, you know, I'll go in there in education. If what happens is, is once they have their friends in or their family members, it stays in that cycle. It's very hard. So to anybody, and I tell people all the time, you need to apply. Like I almost didn't apply because I know it's so hard to get into that cycle. But that's why they need to be able to have more of us. Because one, we need to be able to call out people for telling us no. If you're overly qualified, you're able to do things, we have to be able to start calling out people for saying no to qualified individuals who have the right to be on the continent. And number two, they can never say no if your application is not there. So there's a big, um, like, let me go ahead and stare in your face and let you know what you're saying no to or yes to or whatever. And in one of my cases, what's happened is, is that... Um, oh, I don't know if I can say, I'm not going to say everything. Just it was, it was just a fortunate timing position and placement and the fact that I was able to relocate immediately and I shut down a lot of my life that was living in Dubai and I made it easy for them to say yes and I came and I also came because of the country. I did not necessarily come because of the position of the job or anything else like that. I really did take a lot of my, uh, I'm going to say that, I took a lot of my career, my career pride is gone. My career pride is gone. Um, and when I say career pride, it's like people, I got to have this type of position. I got to have this title. I got to do this. My career pride was gone. I was like, can I eat? All right, cool. Um, <laughs> and I did calculations and I think I think a little differently. Like I have like in my prayer journal when people say, oh, I need to make this amount of money. My prayer journal is this is how much it takes for me to survive monthly. Whatever method God that you give me this money, we get it. And so now I'm going through the whole now new streams of income. So it was never always about my job being the one place that can um, provide that income. It's about what I do. How can I get that income? And so um, I think I went and I've had a shift since then too. Where I had to do things differently now because um, I no longer work at that job. But um, and we'll talk about that later. But what okay. happened was that's how I got it. I got in literally on this one thin line and i also knew if i didn't do it now it would not come back around that job would not have come back around so it was really like a step out on faith and i locked it down and it was absolutely beautiful and it got me to rwanda quicker and then i think that's where if i go into my own personal journey i do feel like god was rewarding me for job well done because i had gone through five years of hell in the workplace and, and I really do feel, huh? In Dubai uh, or in the States? Two years in Dubai, three years in the States. But to the last two years in Dubai, I did so much to prove myself. Like I had to break against all odds. My school got accredited, like all kind of things. A lot of other people got the credit. Um, and and I was okay with that. Like I, I'm, I'm this black woman who's used to everybody else getting credit. Just work hard and make sure you can eat and be okay. And I think that he snatched me from that situation and said, I have other work for you to do. But job well done. Here's a place that you could be and be happy. And then there's other work that had to be done. Okay, so... Uh, you know what's interesting? I didn't realize you were um, in Dubai before you came to Rwanda. I just it's, I years. see a uh, yeah two, two years three. Okay, so I see a correlation between the two of us. You know, we're in the same workout group. You know, we still try to make it yes, happen. She's a little bit more. She's a little bit more committed than I am. She don't know that. I was really hoping this part didn't come up. She's a lot more committed than I am. <laughs> No, but that's how we're doing this collaboration because I know how I feel about collaborations. I will only do it with people that I know and I feel I can co-sign for it and it would be good. So thank you for coming on to this um, particular live with me. But um, I spent uh, two years in Germany before I came to Ghana. And I think that getting out of the country and getting out of the U.S., right, or getting out of your country of origin 
and then having I, I I call it a soft landing. You have a soft landing because oh you yes. Right. And you're seeing how different things there are. And then you come to Africa where everything is almost opposite of anything you're used to. Uh, mm-hmm. Very different. So you have to adjust and it takes time to adjust. But it seems like when you're coming from somewhere else, um, not just going straight from America to to to, to African country, but you're coming to a, a second country, your landing seems to be a bit more like you can adapt better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I see you, girl. Oh my I see gosh. You. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I I never enunciated it in that way until you said it. And I'm like, yes. And then I was also fortunate. I lived in Liberia in 2008. And so, and there's just a couple of other things that's happened in my life that I tell people it makes it easier for me to nice. um to adjust. But that's soft landed because you do have to just deal with so many reality checks like and this one's simple um mile inches feet that's a u.s thing if you don't know this metric system (laughs) if you don't do your metric systems like very basic stuff but we have been so in our own bubble for so long to the point where we think our way is the right way and that's a very very light light example but there are so many things that you have to learn and i do think like if you said if you were in germany and i was in dubai there were some harsh reality checks like i didn't realize not everybody work as hard as i do like okay okay (laughs) y'all in the day at four (laughs) o'clock Mm. Tell it, tell it. <laughs> oh. that is true. Yes, that is so, so, so true. Things are definitely different. The metric system is something else, right? It's something oh my else. Gosh. <laughs> you, I still be calculating. I'd be like, okay, one times two point the five, carry the three. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> Look, let me get confused. They'd be like, how many kilos you are? I was like, kilos? Kilos. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I was like, what's wrong with your cell? Like, I'm anorexic. Like, wh- where does 90 come from? I like it, but this ain't right. I got hips. Oh, I got to convert. Oh, time's the... Uh, never mind. Let me get off this scale. Let me get off this scale. <laughs> right, right, right. So, or like, okay. it's a shoe size. Like, that messes me up. I do not know my shoe size. Ooh, yeah, shoe size, clothes. Inches, I'll be like, oh, my God. No, centimeters. It's centimeters. I'll be like, I have no clue. Everything is completely different when you're coming from America to anywhere else in the world. And so that takes a lot of adjustment for those of us from the U.S. So yes. what are you, um, like, how long have you been in Rwanda? So I, oh, stop, wait a minute. It's six, like, for me, like, in three hours, it's my one year anniversary. I came <laughs> November 1st. Nice. I came November 1st. First, this is my anniversary. Yes, I'm gonna have to play it. Yes, yes anniversary. Do you know what today is? It's your anniversary. Ah. Yes, I'm not gonna hit the note made for you and me. Like, that's how it is. Like, yes, love it. Yes. I am I officially it. almost one years old. Awesome, congratulations. So now that you are in Rwanda, how are you helping others come to Rwanda? What is it that you're doing now in Rwanda? Let's talk about your business. I'll be okay, because like that was a beautiful segue, and then the humbleness in me was like, I just do me. Um, <laughs> and, um, that's where I am. Like, what happened is, is that I wanted to document the story of me coming to Rwanda. And it was really for me, and it was for, um, like, I tell you the whole truth, like, my parents are divorced, so one of the things that just really gets annoyed is, like, I sit there and call my mom, and I'm on the phone with her for an hour, and she's like, how the landing, and all this stuff, and I'm saying everything, good, hang up the phone, then I call my dad, gotta have the same exact conversation, like, y'all can't just be on three-way together, so I can say this one time, then I gotta call my sister, then I gotta call my best friend, it's just like, y'all, this is too much, and so I really started doing the YouTubes to record, like, how my day was, or my revelation so I could just shoot out the video because right. I'm not repeating myself 20,000 times. Um, okay. What, what happened is, is that um, more people started watching 
And they were like, okay, so tell us more, tell us more. And I did feel like I was trying to give like an authentic view about things like, yo, I did not know about the heels. Like my ankles is not set up for this life. Um, <laughs> still not, no, no, no. And then you see people biking and like these people are just riding a bike and then somebody's carrying somebody on top of a bike. I'm just like the quad trisep muscles in, in, in Rwanda is off the chain. These oh, makes no sense. And then it's like, I just, I don't get it. Like, and then there's nothing like being passed by an old lady with two babies on and like bananas on her head. And you really trying to walk up this hill and she just like, What's about this life? And so um, right. that's really what it was is a lot of stories. Like some people were like, you know, you just talk about anything. And I was, really was. That's how I started. And um, what happened is I think the educator in me um, started to kind of pipe up. And I'm really knowledge based. And so when people are like, well, how do I move to Rwanda? Like a lot of people are like, how do you move somewhere? I'll be like, OK, check out your visa. Check out this. They'd be like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I go through the technicals. And so it's like, do you have this? How much do you have here? Have you stayed up here? And so what happened is, is that we just started talking and um, I just started passing out information. And then I was hosting. Um, like little networking events we had something called us giving and where people were coming together and collaborating making really great connections so from all of that um girl you got me cracking up with this leader of chicken <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> right i had to put it up to that <laughs> That is hilarious. <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> I mean, it, would, it would traumatize your life you'd be like but i thought never mind right. um but what happened is, is that um, so from a conversation at a networking event um, and somebody was like, well, what are you going to do to do about this? And I was like, yo, why are you coming to me with so much heat? Like this, this ain't for me to fix. But I am. I'm a problem solver. I'm a fixer. And <clears throat> came up with the concept of creating what's called my cousin connection. And when I talked to my as the subscribers online, I turned around and said, I'm not going to do anything. You're not going to catch me. You're not going to put me out there like boo-boo the fool. That if I create something for us, it is going to be by us. And we started a campaign. And so I was like, this is the deadline. This is the goal. Y'all not going to have me created all these websites and all this elaboration. And then I'm out $5,000 and a beautiful website name and y'all not coming through. And I'm begging y'all just like the chicken dinners on Sunday, you know, when people were driving through the, the hood and I'm out there saying, and chicken dinners um mm, yes mm. but the community showed up the community showed up and i was like oh snap um nice. they called me to be great and we created with a website called my cousin connection and my cousin connection is created for black expats who are looking to visit or move to rwanda we have over i think like 65 to 70 articles now just about the history from Rwanda, but how to how to get your visa how to get your business started things that you haven't considered um different neighborhoods what's your relocation um checklist like all of these different things and then within that there's some people i'm gonna have to say hello to in the chat um and then within that too we also help um, with your relocation services. So many people have come now. Oh, look at the sparkle. I love it. Um, have come <laughs> and like we take them on the bank runs. We get them set up with MTN. We have a system out here called Momo that is really complicated because we have no idea about this stuff in the States. Um, and so we actually walk you through, we walk you through your apps. We make sure that you're connected. Um, we talk you through the different things. We have lifestyle tours which are more geared around different neighborhoods so if you're trying to live what does this look like and so it's really um part of the creation it was we launched july 1st we are still redefining who we are and what we look like and that's because if somebody has a question we, we jump up and try to answer it we try to support whatever ways possible um we have the consultations we have the talking we have vip lunches where it's been really beautiful because we've actually put investors together they've created stuff like it's just we just connect people we just can like we connect. We try to help you. Girl, we got we even have somebody who calls because they can't talk to their taxi driver, and so they talk to one of my counselors so they can translate. Like we're just there to support in whatever way possible to help you get acclimated. Because I will say this: it is not for us to um, 
we help you sustain yourself. Okay. Like, you know, like you only get breastfed for so long now, player. You know what I'm saying? Come on, start walking. Start walking. Um, <laughs> but okay, that's so, what it is. That's what my so cousin connection is. Mycousinconnection.com. Mycousinconnection.com. Okay. So so you guys work with that the diaspora, right? Is it just Americans? Or? No, we're actually open. We've had a couple uh Canadians, um, people in the UK. Um, yeah, it's just, it's open, it's open. Um, but it is for us. Um, that's one thing that we kind of, and right now, you know, we're really good at that. Um, but no, it's not just Americans. So I have another question, but uh, let me uh, thank, uh, hash dapper for the super chat. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> um, so my question is about my cousin connection about the company. It, mm -hmm. Is it a repatriation company or is it more like an expat community of like um, uh, just supporting each other, having a one stop shop where to go to get quick answers about things? What exactly? That is such a good question. I'm like really mad at you right now for that question. Girl, um, bye. Because... <laughs> I don't mean no harm. Just Look at you making me be professional. Um, so let me say this. I think in my original mind, it was like what you said um, in the second one where I was just looking for it to be a community. Um, like mm -hmm. we have the events posted. We have, you know, different information posted and everything like that. What I think has accidentally happened is the first where we do sit there and support you if, with information and knowledge in mm -hmm. coming back. Um, so it was not created to do that, but it was created to be a house first for all your information that you need. But what happens is, is once you get connected with us, like literally just had somebody who flew in yesterday and was like, wait a minute, you don't have your results yet. Let's call and find out where your results are. Let's do this here. What do you need? Uh, you're looking for this place. Okay. Well, go ahead and try out your first three plans. If not call me, I got somebody who I can call in the back. Like literally that's what we do. So it ended up being that. And then I have to say, because of my cousin connection, um, well, I have branched out and done retire in Rwanda tours, which is really focused on our retirement community. And there's mm -hmm. other things coming. So I think you're right. I, I just didn't know. Let me sit here and be quiet and write notes because um, I just learned something about my own business. <laughs> no. No, that sounds amazing. What you're doing is fantastic. It sounds like the diaspora community there is um, uh, receptive to each other and helping each other and working together and being positive. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Yeah, so I mean, when you have that, you have the ability to do things in such a normal and fantastic way like you are. I love what you are doing. It is amazing. If I were in Rwanda, I definitely would be hitting up these uh, networking events because they sound like a lot of fun. And the us giving, like, I just love that yes. that title. That's we're ready. <laughs> yes, we found our turkey. We found, girl, we had to find orange sweet potatoes, but we found them. We found them. You found them? You found them? I mean, but sweet potatoes. At least black Not folks there believe in Thanksgiving or us giving or how you want to put it. I was trying to get people to, together to do it here. And folks was like, oh, I don't believe in those white people holidays. I'm like, okay, I but, can't. Well, I'll Too say much. here. And, it's, and so let me say this. And that's one reason why the word is us giving, because I knew that that was going to be the argument. And my thing I, is, is like, I, let's be quiet. We have our own culture. And yes. you can call it what you want to. But, but black folks coming around the table. Yes. And eating some good food, yes. talking in communion while the kids is at the kitty table and yes. you know, all this stuff. And then, and then you end the whole night by playing the temptations um, <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> you know, like no, we yes. have traditions, dude. We have things that happen. And so we can get into the politics. Even that's part of the conversation is getting into the politics. But yeah. the whole purpose of it is like I'm I'm not here for let me I gotta say this correctly. I'm not here for I know what happened with the pilgrims and there's been a lot of jacked up stuff in our history. But there's yeah. also these beautiful moments, dude, that I right. can remember with my family around the holiday season, with my friends. Right. I, I, I can tell you this. My grandpa was <clears throat> supposed to, um, like, he wasn't supposed to make it past three months. 
You know what I'm saying? And he stayed with us six months. And half the reason I believe he stayed with us six months is because my homegirl, Cassandra, I'm shouting you out, makes this macaroni and cheese. And she only makes it during the holidays. And he wow. had vowed to get the last of that macaroni and cheese. Like, we all knew we was not allowed to touch the five-star mac and cheese thing. And what happened Man. is, like, the year before, my brother ate it. And my grandpa can't see in one eye, but he showed it. Oh, he 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 saw all of that go down. And, you know, it's like, like it's just all these stories. Like, we're not going to lose the stories of us. That's I don't care what happens. Let's not right. lose the stories of us. Let's keep making memories. And that's one thing about My Cousin Connection. I believe in memories. I believe in moments. I believe in just the things that make life robust. And we that's, do. We are right. life. So right. we're gonna come together. We're gonna say we're gonna wobble. Somebody gonna wobble up in this piece with me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I just I like how you put that. That is uh the truth because as black Americans, we do have our own culture. You know what me I mean? We too. have but we have our own culture, and our culture is part of coming together as family, our friends, our friends and family or house hopping in different people's houses on Thanksgiving. Couple you know. Wearing. Okay, exactly. It's just it's a part of who we are. And I have Touch fun. Potato salad. Let's go. Let's do this. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate what you're talking about. And I'm glad that you are sharing what's happening in Rwanda because I know it can be very helpful and motivating to people who are either on the fence about whether they want to come or people who have already booked their ticket and they're coming for their first visit or those who already visited and they are about to make the move. I think this is the kind of stuff they, they like to hear. I know I would like to hear it. This is what I would like to hear. I like to hear someone like me that looks like me, has some of the same experience, me coming and doing things. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. That's what's up. Hey guys, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you, High Vibes. I appreciate all of you guys inside of the comments giving um, basically shout outs, talking about your own experiences. Those of you watching from the bush, you know, in the back of the room uh, who aren't saying anything, please make, sure, <laughs> please make sure to like the video. Go check out Jay Essence Journey uh, YouTube. I'm going to put her information in the description after the live ends. But I want you guys to know who you are hearing from today. We are talking about Rwanda, uh, living, moving, working, just having your life in Rwanda. And Jay is now living in Rwanda. So, okay, tell us about land. Can foreigners own yes. land in Rwanda? Why you be asking all these questions? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You're going to get in technicals. All right, so here's the first one. <laughs> I own land. I own two... I don't know how to say plots. I own two pieces of land. Um, it's in the call the Bulgacera area. They are, I would say, lakefront properties. I am overlooking the lake. Um, once again, God be doing stuff. Um, and um, so I own land. Foreigners do own land. There has been, in recent weeks, I'm looking at it, a new ruling on land. So for those people who are looking for land, I'm going to be 100% authentic and say you need to talk to somebody. You might need to talk to two people. And the reason why is, is that foreigners, there's three different types of land. There's residential, there's business, no, commercial, and then there's agricultural. At this point in time, there is a limit on how much residential land a foreigner can hold. Um, the reason behind the limit, I am not a government official. I am only utilizing my opinion. But on my last live, I talked about the Master Vision 2050. And what happened is, is that Rwanda has had visions um, and, you know, documented statements in this documented statement of what Rwanda wants to be in order for Rwanda to big up and pull up the poverty rates in order for them to pull up the economy and for them to hit this goal. They have a goal of becoming a middle income um, country in Africa, going to a high income country in Africa. They have all these steps written out because Rwanda is small. I think that they this is me thinking. 
they are limiting the opportunities for people to purchase residential land at a large amount because what happened is when people were purchasing land they necessarily were not building on it or investing on it which means that they were not having jobs and they were not getting income on it and a lot of people were holding land and waiting for it to resell therefore right. That opportunity doesn't come necessarily to build the country. So you can come and purchase land under agricultural and business, no problem. But to turn around and purchase land under residential, is there's a limitation. Unless you have a business plan and can prove otherwise. So that's what I'm saying. It's, it's something you really want to talk to somebody through. Right, right. And, and we know that you are just sharing for entertainment purposes. Only and for not entertainment. This only for a exactly. Hey, this right? the, hey, this is it's the puppy. That's it's the take that, take that, take that, take that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, uh, okay, so I, I realize they've made changes, and I'm sure that um, those changes are going to be um, well known soon enough as people do their research and find out how things are happening because every country um, makes adjustments and new laws when they need to. Um, but I have a question. When before the before the changes were made, um, was land there leasehold or was it freehold? Um, no, uh, free, like the land I have is mine, and there's no going through chiefs or anything. And so that's another thing. Buying when it comes to property, when it comes to land, is a government-run entity. Like you really don't even need to have lawyers there, and that's something that's very different for us. And um, people always come all the time, like, "What's the lawyer?" Because you don't need a lawyer. You need to be land notary, and you need to have you know these different things to go through. Um, but it it was it was your land. There was only certain places where it was leasehold, and that was like parts of Kigali, um, because that's the city city. Um, where they were kind of watching to make sure building was happening. But like the land that I have is mine. 100% is mine, is mine, mine. I think I think everyone has a different um, view or perception of what leasehold is based on the country that you're you're living in or going to. Um, so okay, good. I understand that. Okay, so and then um, I will say like the um, kind of with the leasehold here, and it's been a murky, so I'm kind of murky on this one. Um, you have it. You just have to get it approved um, by the government or the land agency office, like, for 50 years. Like, are you using it for what you're using for? And it's nothing minor. It's just, once again, making sure that they don't have dormant land. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So that sounds good. So, so how are the people in Rwanda? Like, how do they, are they receptive to, you know, Black Americans, you know, rolling through, you know, how they feel about it? Um, like, I don't know how the truth I'm going to get. Um, they're receptive. I mean, they um, could, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but um, so let me go ahead and just be 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. Um, Please. I know, and it's like so hard for me to say. Um, but just like, you know how when you would go over to somebody's house and your mama would be like, don't act nothing, I raised you right, you know, don't do this, don't ask for no food, just, just you, you put your hands, you would like, Ugh, you know, like, get you, people watching us. People watch. um, I don't yeah. think that um, Black American, so I do think the concept of a Black American out here is still very new. Um, this was mm -hmm. not really a place that people were always going to. And so what I will say is that they are receptive to us. They are very happy to see us. They, they love us. Um, but you have to also recognize that, once again, your name is carrying a stereotype. And to know that you're opposite of what they see on TV is one thing. So um, I would say you have to act accordingly. You just can't, like... Part of me wants to tell some people, heal some of your trauma or at least acknowledge it first. Okay. Um, I yes, you're right. You, part of you, all of you. Let me say it for you. Black people. you carrying us. you carrying drama. us. Like, yeah. you act a fool <laughs> that I come behind and I'm being judged by their perception of you and you wasn't ready to be here. You yes. know, like. Yes. 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 I understand. I understand. 
fully and And I'll be honest with you, I bump my head and I make mistakes, but you know, at least I go back and say, Hey, this is how I should have handled this situation, you know, da 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 or whatever else like that. Like I, I there is so much in us we don't even know. There's so much in us that we don't even know. And so that's why I just say that you cannot be walking around with a chip on your shoulder. Like Rwanda is actually very calm, um, very calm. And I will sit there and say that too. Like you have to know the history. Um, there's not a lot of anger because anger brought about death, like that hatred. So no, 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 we don't get loud and in the streets and all that out here. Like it's a very concern. I say Rwanda's like living at your grandparents' house for the summer. Like oh. come in. Yeah, it's 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 like that. Like, and if you you know, fast like, but it's not as loud. Like when I was in Liberia or different places, it's not as loud, it's not as hollering or whatever, or different things like that. And so um honestly, there's not a lot of corruption. There's people who do things, but people do things because people are people. But you can't don't have to go around all the time with a chip on your shoulder and thinking that they're out to get you. Like you can literally ask questions. Like I had a situation where somebody was like um, they were at the um, supermarket. I guess it started raining and everything else like that. I guess they were standing for 10 minutes and somebody was like, hey, um, you need to go sit down. He, why, why are you telling me to sit down? They were like, actually, we noticed that you've been here for an hour and you've been standing the whole time do you want to sit down he's like oh oh like ask questions first don't go with the assumptions that we're used to because we're used to those just ask questions but overall the rwandan people are lovely i love them good 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 girl this has been great i mean i know that people have learned something today guys if you want to ask a question to jay essence journey you should go ahead and ask it in the chat um because you know she's spitting straight knowledge to y'all so you might as well take advantage of this opportunity while she's on live uh to ask whatever questions you want to ask and if you want to uh pop on and actually ask it that's fine, but y'all better remember, y'all don't be coming on my lives half naked. You need to be sitting up with your clothes on and come on my live. Y'all already know I'm playing the Oh, because they be having, like, was it the tank top and the little BDB hairs right there coming through what? and all that other stuff? Oh, what? Oh, ew. <laughs> what? They coming in with the Teddy Pendergrass pose, like, <laughs> the, the, 19, the 1980s cover. Like, yeah. girl, what you want? Laid out velvet, velvet carpet rub right now. Um, <laughs> um, just saying. So okay, oh, sorry. I see. I thought, I thought this was a question, but this is just a long comment. I think. Stephen, um, first of all, shout out to Stephen. Much love. Much love. Yes. Yeah. Yes, he's over there in Uganda. I guess he's making it do what it do over there because I've been seeing him. Yeah. Positive. Yeah. yeah. So um. What do you recommend for people who want to come to Rwanda? What do you suggest that they do to start preparing? And, and, and what, what, what are your recommendations? Oh, my gosh. And so here's the thing. I don't give blanket recommendations. Like, anytime we start talking, I always ask people first, like, their questions. And I say that because um, I won't say this because we're in the same workout group. So I'm going to say it from one thickum to a slickum. Um, <laughs> Go ahead, girl. <laughs> um, so one of the things that I really used to have a pet peeve about is that whenever I would go to the gym or, you know, when gyms were really big and stuff, I would always have like a guy come up to me and be like, hey, I can make you help you lose weight. I have a meal plan. I have this. I have this. I could do this. And they would turn around and start telling me all the stuff they think I need, but they never asked me what I wanted. Yes. And um, and I think that's also something that's a horrible assumption because I'm running half marathons, dude. Like I'm a strong endurance person and yes. I might not be skinny, but I have that. But what I realized is that that was very early for me in the way that I do things is that I will not go and take my assumption upon your life without asking you what it is that you want. And so if I don't ask those questions, we're going to go down a totally wrong way. So the first thing when you tell me when people say, what is it that they want through Rwanda? I'm going to sit there and say, well, what is it that you're seeking? What is it that you, you, know, what is it that you want? What is it that you're hoping to find? And are uh -huh. you trying to find a fairy tale or are you trying to find 
and like I always say, your own personal freedom. Because I can help you discover a place that will be quiet enough for you to figure out you. And you can just make that decision and determination if it works. You can ask me questions and I'm going to tell you if it's yes, if it goes into that direction or no, really, maybe not. Because I tell you now, for people who are very used to city life, very New Yorkish, if you're here, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm Like, Rwanda ain't for you, player. Right. Rwanda's <laughs> not for you. And right. um, only because it's like, I am country. I grew up in Oklahoma. And Stephen, I saw that little slick comment that you stated. Do know we have some bomb barbecue. Do know Texas is also up in this blood. So <laughs> we own the barbecue tip. Don't be sitting there all willy nilly and all this stuff. Blah, 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 blah. And then what's North Carolina barbecue? I ain't never heard no North Carolina NC barbecue. <laughs> I ain't heard of that. Just because you made something in your grandpapa's house and makes you feel good about yourself, you put a little sweet baby rays on it or whatever, they don't make it authentic barbecue. All right, but I'm going back to where I was um, before. I forgot what I was because he really didn't make me hot with that one. Um, you gave an excellent answer to that question. So, okay, so Gloria has a question for you. She says, yes. hello, Jay. what is the okay. health situation like in Rwanda? Like doctors' visits, oh. pharmacies, and such. I have to know who I'm talking to when you say that question only because people ask for different aspects. If you're looking for general health, not an issue. And then one of those things, and I know you can speak on this, um, is that once you leave America, like leaving America is a whole different concept. Health care is just different. And we don't yep. even know how to think like that. Yep. And so um, – there's a video I did with my mother when I took, I made her go to the hospital. In fact, I'm glad I'm doing this because I'm going to make her chill, go to the dentist. Um, but I made her go do a checkup because she's 74. And I was like, if you're going to come here, there's a doctor that needs to know your medications, know your um, vitals, know all of this stuff. So she went to the doctor and she was freaked out because it's the first time in her life that she had to mark. She did not have insurance. And right. um, because that's, and she, had a checkup they did blood work and um it was all uninsured and she paid 25 dollars. and she had three prescriptions yeah and she paid 25 dollars. and so those are things that we don't even have a concept of yeah. when you talk about that in america so when you say what's the health situation like when i tell you it's possible that you are not going to be in nobody's hut with one doctor who you know right. like right right running around behind you no it's very solid it's very clean it's 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 very together and that piece i will say for people um who are moving over because this is me giving you game now when you're moving here and you're looking for long-term situations um and if you had health insurance before there's different type of health insurance opportunities you can get you can get one to cover you just in rwanda you can get one that covers you for eastern africa you can get a health insurance policy that covers you for all of africa so if something had to happen and i know um, Kenya has some of your top hospitals. So from people who have your cancers or might have had strokes or whatever, like those higher levels, I would tell them to get an insurance policy that at least lets them go to Kenya. But have you heard of actual hospitals in Rwanda or private doctors or doctors in general taking these insurances? Yeah, I don't understand that question. Like, what do you mean? When, when something actually happens, they take out this international insurance and they try to use it at the doctor in, let's say, an African country, is it actually honored? Are they still expect to be paid cash out of pocket? Nope, ours is honors. I say this because as far as I know, they're not honored and you got you still gotta pay cash out of pocket. So I'm just asking really? is it we had insurance. Well, let me let me say this because um when I did the research, number one, I was under work, I had insurance honored, not an issue. Um okay. then two, there's insurance companies that are rooted out here mm -hmm. that um, I've I've contacted and talked to and I know that those are honored. Three, I had a friend and so my friend's husband had a severe leg break and they did the operation and everything and because of his whatever, whatever, it was not healing correctly. And that's mm -hmm. how I know about the Kenya thing because when the doctors knew it wasn't healing correctly, they told them we don't have the proper equipment they do in Kenya, called Kenya and like basically had, you know, because they're like, this is stuff that I know has happened, entertainment purposes only, but um, yeah. 
So, so what you're saying, the thing that I would say, and I've had some people call me, is that I've given them the numbers of the popular hospitals, um, your King Pfizer, all of that stuff, like your real private hospitals, and I told them to call them to make sure yeah. and find out. But I have not heard a situation. And the only thing that's going to make me frightened about that is probably, once again, and it's when you got to get out of a, that American insurance because yeah. America will make promises that things will happen and they don't happen and they didn't check it through. And I'll right. say since I moved over here, I I get like even my life insurance is a like UK based company now. Like yes. nothing I have because uh, and that's a big reality check. I think I did one on that when I had life insurance in America, it only covered me under three cases. And now my life insurance, which is much cheaper through my other company, covers me in 87 different cases. And I just didn't even know that could happen. Like there's a lot of things that you have to unlearn. Yeah, there is. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, next question. Um, Jay, what has been the most challenging adjustment for you? Food, customs, African CP time? <laughs> yeah. Timing and pacing. Mm. I, it takes me three hours to get one. Like, I still, I have a whole list. This be my to-do list here. It takes me three hours to get one thing done. And I just be like, I can't believe that this happened. It took me two hours to get bed sheets. Like, not even the bed. Like, <laughs> do you know how what? much I can get done in an hour? Like, do you are talking to queen multitasker? I got a laptop back there. I got this here. I got classes. I got book here. I got two three like i am a queen multi tasker and out right. here it's just task it ain't even tasker it ain't even multi -ta it's just task we yeah don't this <laughs> task so it's that it's um i talk very fast i do things very fast so i'm real good to be like okay i need you to do this do this do this do this and go mm -hmm. don't nothing happen don't nothing happen Okay. And so it's this is an adjustment. So I'm gonna say that is the biggest one. And then I would say my technical one is currency. Like trying to get money over and trying to figure out the most cheapest way, most efficient way, time. Ugh. Like dealing with that currency is a beast. Yeah. Ugh, it is. It's a beast. Nobody <laughs> will until you over here, you try to get your thousand dollars from the US, like, oh my gosh, currency is a beast. Uh huh. Our, um, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's not that bad in Ghana. I mean, it's not great, but it's not that bad. Okay. All right. I get it. I'm not even going to dig into that one. All right, girl. That sounds good. Okay. So this you question is not bad. You're talking about currency is not bad. I just feel like I, I don't have a problem getting my money. I have a problem with the American banks always Me. trying to flag something for fraud or trying to say, okay, you've been there too long time for you to come and present yourself. That's American banks. They on that. They on that. They on that mess. <laughs> like that. Yeah, I'll say. Then I'll say that because that and then the fees. Like, yeah, you really do have to have conversations. And that's one of the articles I had to do. And somebody was really helpful with that because I did an article and I said sample questions to ask your bank. And they actually took that article and went to their bank and realized that their bank was not equipped to do international transfers without their personal signature. And they were just like, yo, they immediately changed banks, you know, and it was just like, yeah, those are the little things that we talk about. Like, if you don't know to have these questions, if you don't know what questions to ask your um, mobile provider, because I've been through it, like, mm -hmm. it's absolutely mm -hmm. headaches to try to think, think things work over here. Yeah. No. OK, so that's good. That's good. OK, so let's do this one last question. I, I don't know. know how you can answer it, but whatever you want to try Y'all coming, coming through some real questions. Like, I'm sweating now. Sister is stressed <laughs> out. Oh, my gosh. Um, whew, I'm in London and opened a successful business in Ghana. First of all, stop. Shout outs to that one. Shout outs to you having a business in Ghana and it's successful. Just much love. Can I help you research and test the business waters in Rwanda? So you're going to make me say all of the truth. Go ahead. You say what you got to say, because I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to make have followers. I mean, what 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 determines a successful business in Ghana? Because I've seen so many people in Ghana talk so much hype and really uh, nothing's happening. 
But you know, oh, that's you went be- there. Oh, oh, you went back to the to before the comma. You went before the comma. You. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, what what makes you think so successful? Just ask it. <laughs> I'm behind the comma because um, I you, you're like, and I don't know you, so I can thank you for tuning in. How you doing? <laughs> it's nice to meet you. Um, you're asking me to commit to something. I don't even know what it is. Exactly. And you're asking me to be part of something, and I have, and one, I'm not going to turn around and tell you, yes, I can do something if it's not my forte. I can tell you how to get in touch with the business department, and I will tell you, Rwanda Development Board will sit down with you with their actual people and help you figure out the yeah. best moves for your business. They will turn around and talk to you about different districts that might be able to utilize it or need it. They will also tell you if the business might be successful or might not. I know somebody who came out here who was very eager to start a fast food restaurant and they were kind of like, yo, that ain't going to pop over here. And it really doesn't because everybody right. used to take their time. They sit like the fast food really doesn't really work well. And they went back to the drawing board and came up with something different. So, um, before, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll do with the after comment. I hope I said it with enough love that you still feel edified as an individual. But um, I don't <laughs> like taking on responsibilities that were not mine to take on. Um, if it's your business and it's your vision and it's your it's your work. Now, will I sit down with you and help you answer a couple questions as much as I can? But that's not my vision, baby. It's yours. And I'm not going to sign on to something that's not my vision. I've been through that before. And it's not for me. I got too much <laughs> going on in my life. Child, <laughs> you so nice. Uh, I know. Hey, wasn't that I, good? My mama yeah. raised me right. Yeah. You know. You say it right. nice the first time. You know what it is because the Chicago and me will come all the way out. <laughs> oh, so you nope. Chicago. Yeah. You, like, nope. I don't know you. You, you came in and I see it right there. And it's, I don't know this player. I don't know you. I say it nice. See, that's the country in me. I'm going to say it nice. Now, here's the thing. I said it nice that one time. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm helping you get a better understanding. Uh huh. Uh huh. Right, right. Okay, let me address this comment real quick. Uh, okay, so SM, you say, apart from cleanliness, there is nothing Rwanda has over Ghana. Let me be very clear. This is not a tip for tat of what country is better than the other. This particular live is sharing the experience of someone who came from America and moved to Rwanda and how she did it, what she likes about it, and what she's doing now to help others come over. So we're not doing a tit for tat. I know many people like to do that. No, boo. This is not that type of party. We come in together as um, women. We're coming together in love. We're coming together as sisters who are just sharing what options are out there and how we decided to take our own individual journeys. That's what this is about. Okay? You own one. Uh, but it, let me okay. let me let me add to that one too. Only okay. because you know I, I come in with the education. Well, yeah. Rwanda and Ghana actually have a partnership through their governments and they both work together to edify each other. So <laughs> what you're turning around and saying is that you're creating separatism that the own governments don't have. So no, not a competition, more of a collaboration. Check them, check the messages, check the mails, check the news. They've been working together for the last year and a half. Mm-hmm. They sure have. They sure have. They've been talking about it too here all the time on um, the news stations. Yes. So, you mm-hmm. are, mm-hmm. so I, nice. I love that. I love how people put their own agendas in something that is not the government's agenda at all. Yeah, they say a lot of things. <laughs> They say, they say, they say a lot of things. Miss Nigeria, like, girl, thank you so much. I know you changed your name. She know I'm always going to call you the name I know. Uh, that's my oh. moderator. So that's our homie. She's also in our group. I'm not going to call her real name out. <laughs> thank you. <No, okay. laughs> um, so is there anything else you want to add? Um, do you want to tell people where they can go to um, find out about My Cousin Connection, where they can go for your YouTube channel before we close it out? Um. So... Those people who are interested in My Cousin Connection, it is My Cousin Connection, www. I'm not going to spell all the words out, My Cousin Connection.com. 
Um, <laughs> but that's really the space that we um focus with on Rwanda and really giving you information and knowledge and those things. If you're just curious about me as a person um, and who I am, my name is Jay Essence. J A I space essence MJ Essence Journey on YouTube. I'm J at my cousin connection.com. Literally at this point in time, I do feel like I'm Googleable. So um you can um find me if you're trying to hunt me down. Um on Instagram, like it's so many different entities, dude. Like if you want to find me, like you can find me. I know you see me on the radio. True. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Again, guys, I'm going to put her um, her information, her description, her information in the description box so that I when agree. you right <laughs> when you want to reach out, you can. Please go over to her channel and subscribe so you can learn more about Rwanda and her journey. You know what I'm saying? So love it that you agreed to come on to my channel. Thank you so much. I appreciate you dearly. <laughs> That's the hair. There we go. You high yellow. You bright like damn near white. Hey, no, hold up. No, 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 no. See, it's just because it's winter time. It's just because it's winter time. You know, no. Okay. It's just because it's, okay. it's winter time. Okay. And, and the way the light is set up, you know, it's like the light is it's, it's a brand new light. So it's the ultra light light bulb. And it, the way the shine is hit right there, like, you know, now I got to. <laughs> You know, and because it's Halloween, and so I'm trying to do the little ghost thing, like, hello, welcome to your future. You know, like, we ain't gonna sit here and call a sister out just because, you know, pigmentation don't be pigging and tation all the way through at times. Like, some, we go through cycles. It's Girl, the your melody of the earth. Your melody huh? be positive regardless. I'm just playing it's with you. I just Let me tell I you just... this. Don't ever question my melanin because I got some full C that will make you see the truth. <laughs> you say what you I want. Love, love it. I love it. I love every minute of it. This has been a fantastic live. You are hilarious. And it was so much fun to be able to do this live with you. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on this live. Again, I'm going to put her information in the description. Please go over and subscribe to her channel when you're watching this now. Or those of you who will watch the replay, go over and Subscribe to J Essence Journey. Okay, girl, thank you so much for joining me. Have a good night. Thank you for, yes, for having me there. That was easy. I messed up the whole good night. Do it again. I messed you up. It was like the drop the mic and I kind of started talking. Go ahead. No, no, no. I ain't dropping the <laughs> mic, bro. No, whatever you want to say, say it. Say it. I, had uh -huh. a, I just had a fun time. So thank you for making, look, thank you for helping me get into my anniversary. I'm so appreciative. <laughs> this was a beautiful moment. Yes, I'll be working out in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Happy anniversary. And we look forward to celebrating more anniversaries of you living and thriving in Rwanda. Okay. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Peace, y'all. <laughs>